Well, the impact of the pandemic on the global economy could be staggering. With more on that, let's turn to William Lee. He joins us live from Los Angeles. He's chief economist at the Milken Institute think tank. Bill, thank you for joining us. I want to begin with really the impact on the airline and tourism industry. Can they survive this? Those people facing industries are the most affected, restaurants, airlines, hotels, and of course they can survive it if the governments, as they are in the United States, aware of their predicament and are willing to extend them credit, uh, the, the, the banks are willing to extend them uh, uh, emergency loans and loan forbearance. That's really critical to allowing late payments. So with those in place, I think it's, I am almost absolutely sure that the, uh, the, the industries will survive and survive quite nicely. Have we ever seen anything like this before? I mean, obviously, after the September 11th attacks in this country, things came to a screeching halt. But there was a light at the end of the tunnel, economically speaking. Here, there's still so much uncertainty. That's exactly the right question to ask. This is probably one of the first recessions in global history that's induced by public health policies. The fear of the consequences of the virus has got everyone locked down, Businesses shut and everyone hunkered down at home. And, and it's really the fear that's causing more of the harmful economic consequences than the virus itself. And so as tragic as the number of deaths are, it is relatively small compared to other uh, diseases we've had and also compared to what other consequences we've had in, in natural disasters. But nevertheless, public policies are taking the safe way of containing people, and that is wreaking economic havoc around the world. And we've seen some extreme volatility on Wall Street. The Dow, fortunately, if we could put up the, um, uh, the New York Stock Exchange, the numbers up again, is Dow over a 700 points. But boy, we've seen some ugly, historic uh, lows. Uh, how long is this uh, turbulent, nasty market that we've seen going to last? Clearly a big change today. You point to the stock market, but I would also point to kind of wonky, uh, under hittings of the markets called the repo market and short-term credit markets. That's the foundation of the banking system and credit supply to companies, especially small businesses. Those are also being jeopardized. And the fact that the Federal Reserve has stepped in to shore those up shows you how serious we are to try to calm markets down and ensure the proper functioning of markets. And, and quite frankly, the markets will calm down the minute they realize the authorities' health policies are in place and we're starting to see a slowdown in the trajectory of new cases. So what is your advice, Bill, to you know, investors, senior citizens who have money in the stock market? How would you ease their concerns right now? As someone who has seen his 401k become a 101k, I am also hurt by this. And I assure you that if I had cash around, this is the time I'm looking around for bargains because things that I thought were valued at a certain level are now at half that level. And boy, are there bargains out there. This is the time to buy for a huge rebound later on in the year. Wow. They say there's that expression that we have, uh, do not touch your face uh, during this uh, coronavirus. Also, do not touch your 401k, but you're telling me something different. You're saying it's a good time to buy. I'm, I'm telling you it's a good time to add to your 401k. And, 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 and again, go in carefully, go in carefully, go in carefully, right? Take your time, find your bargains, but this is the time to find the bargains, not when the market rebounds. Understood. Thank you for that explanation. William Lee, thank you so much.